Hello everyone, my name is Aline Sano. I'm a singer, a songwriter, and a performer. After realizing that most of my fans are mothers, fathers, and children, and I myself love kids to death, so I've decided to bring something that's even more fascinating to kids. I have some books that I'm going to read for you, and it's going to be something continuous, so please just subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and comment what you like and just tell me everything you want to tell me. So, today's book is called Hope Restored. Here it is. And the author is called Violet Warunji. Let's get it on. It was a sunny afternoon in Wagembe Estate. All was calm and peaceful as everything burst lazily in the afternoon sun. The peace was suddenly shattered by the loud noises from a compound in the, in the estate. Jody, I'll not tell you this again. Sweep the house this minute, Aunt Nyakato yelled. But Auntie, I've just finished sweeping this compound. Jody cried. So what? Is it my job to be your housemate? Aunt Nyakato asked. But I'm tired, cried Jody, his shoulders dropping with tiredness. He was seven years old. However, he was small for his age and people often mistook him for being five years old. He wore a defeated expression on his face, which would have drawn sympathy from a hard crab from stone. But not Aunt Nyakato's. Hers was made of stuff harder than stone. She planted her hand on her hips. If you were my child, I will not hang you by your toes and give you a trashing that you will never forget, she said. Well, I think it's not fair, Jody started to say. But he had hardly got the words out when Aunt Nyakato grabbed him by his ears. She pulled his ears up until he was dangling in the air. I will report you to mommy, Jody screamed. And what will mommy do to me? Aunt Nyakato asked him. She will chase you out of our house, Jody shouted. Neither your mother nor your little kids can chase me from this house. It is my brother's house, and I will leave only when I'm ready, Aunt Nyakato said. Jody ran to his room, tears streaming down his cheeks. He locked his door and threw himself on the bed. Daddy, Daddy, why did you leave us? And Nyakato is so cruel. Daddy, he cried as his little body shook uncontrollably. Jody's sister, Daisy, found him like this. One hour later, Daisy was starting. She was tall, slim, and dark-skinned. What is it, Jody? Did you get into a fight? Daisy asked. Jody shook his head. She pinched me, Daisy. Aunt Nyakato pulled my ears until they almost came off. Jody reported sobbing. Daisy examined his ears and noted their tenderness. Ouch! You're hurting me! That's what Jody said, moving away from her because she touched his ears. We must tell mommy when she comes back, Daisy said firmly. She will show Aunt Nyakato the door this time. You wait and see. Daisy smiled at the thought she would be happy to see Aunt Nyakato go. She had made life difficult since her arrival. But then, nothing has ever been the same since Daddy died. Daisy said to herself, Daisy remembered that fateful day when their uncle Steve had picked them up from school. Uncle Steve was their mother's younger brother. He was 25 years old. Uncle Steve lived with them at Wagembe when he was in secondary school. Now he operated a small taxi business. He had bought a second-hand car which he used as a taxi to earn income. The children loved him and looked up to him as their elder brother. Uncle Steve did not always pick them up from school, but whenever there was a problem at home, he was the one who went for them. Daisy, Jody, and Uncle Steve started as they neared their compound. 
then he stopped and looked about as though he had forgotten what he wanted to say. This is not easy. You both know that your father has been very sick lately. Well, the doctors did their best. He let the statement drift. Daisy stared straight ahead while Jody moved around about nervously on his seat. As they got into the compound, Daisy saw a large crowd of people gathered. Her heart started beating faster. This could mean only one thing. No. Her brain screamed at her. This cannot be true. They were quickly ushered into the house where they found their mother sitting quietly at a corner in their living room. Her eyes were red and swollen from crying. She was surrounded by a number of female relatives who were consoling her. Aunt Nyakato was also present, wailing and holding her head. Daisy stared at her mother and all their relatives crying, then walked out of the house into the garden. The cold reality that their father had passed away washed over her slowly, and Daisy let the tears flow. Their father's body was taken back to Nyakabobo, their ancestral village for burial. After Mr. Mulodi's burial, some of his relatives swooped down on the home. They wanted to take all the properties left behind by Mr. Mulodi. They said that it belonged to them. Jody's mother, Dora, called them vultures. Why do you call them vultures, mommy? Jody asks. A vulture, Jody, is a bird that does not hunt but waits for other animals to die so that it can take their flesh. So, thank you very much for watching. This is Read with Aline Sano and I hope you enjoyed everything. So please, I need to really know what your kids think about my videos. So please comment down there, comment below. I will see it. And remember, this is not just about reading and having fun. This is also about learning. Please, I want to know what they think so that next time I can bring more and more and more interesting books. And please, please, please do not forget to subscribe by clicking that red thing. It's written subscribe down below. And then after subscribing, you will see a bell so that you can see the notifications whenever I release a new video. So please do that for me and we will have helped each other to build our community because you know the, the kids are our future so let's build our future i love you very much see you next time Mwah.